Hey guys, uh, well, I just got the new Menards uh, Beta 2 Santa Fe F7, F9, whatever we want to call it. Figure I might as well open it up. I know there's already been a few unboxings, but I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on it and I'll try to clear some track and see how it runs. Um, this is going to end up being a Christmas present, so I have to pack it back up uh, in such a way that a four year old won't notice. So, shouldn't be too tough, he said. So anyway, um, let me get right to it. All right, so here's the box. Let's make sure this is all in frame here. Yep, nothing like using your rolling stock for uh, structural support, huh? Yeah, well, it's a bunch of real kings and a bunch of lime juice stuff, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so let's see here. Old real king, I should say at that, so. All right, um, I'm just gonna kind of open this up here. I will say I'm a little worried that I've got this dent <laughs> right here. So we'll see. Now, from what I've seen, these things come fairly well packaged. So I'm not too worried, but we'll find out in just a minute. I did not have the sense of mind to get the free uh, truck. But frankly, I don't need any Rolling, uh, any cars right now. I will later, but I don't know what I want yet. My layout is still in the very early stages, even though I've been working on it for over a year. That's what happens when you have a baby. At, well, I didn't have a baby, but when your wife has a baby yet. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't realize it, but <laughs> uh, I got a truck. So that's cool. I've got the Menards Kensky box truck, which I, which I think I saw in one of the other videos, so ah, that's kind of nice. I guess I didn't have to add it specifically in order to get it, which is cool. Might as well open it, take a look, see what I've got here. Oh, not bad. So, uh, you know, the odd thing is, I see a lot of U-Hauls and I see a lot of Penske's. I don't know where I would go to rent a Penske truck. Like, U-Haul I know about. But maybe it's a, a regional thing. Anyway, nice. Okay, main attraction. So the good news is the um, the puncture happened here. Now they did not pad, so that Penske truck was rattling around, which I guess is not a big deal. But um, anyway, the good news is nothing got punctured that was vital. I'm just gonna kind of turn this box upside down. These things always end well, don't they? When you do it like this, that's why you can do that. I'll just pull it out off camera. In fact, I'll come over here. It's really wedged in there. Really wedged. There we go. It's a firm fit. All right, so I'll bring it back over. Let's see. So, pretty good looking box. And again, we've seen these before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Let's open it up. Oh, there she blows. A hump like a snow hill. All right, let's see. So there it is. Um, just like everyone else has shown on their videos. Um, but what I intend to do with this is um, give you some of my thoughts as a, somebody who works in the tech industry and looks for how much technology they can pack into, into things like this. Now this is obviously a, what was it, a $160 engine. Not too much technical in here, but still, I'm wondering what frequency that remote is on. I'm guessing it's 900 megahertz. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just kind of curious to see how this interoperates with legacy DCS. I don't imagine we're gonna have any issues. So, all right, let's, um, again, I have to do this carefully so that my three-year-old doesn't notice. 
one. I do wish there were some Menards closer to me in Virginia, but there aren't, and that's okay. All right, now all the features on here are the same as in that first beta. I did not get the beta, but I, I you know, I scoured YouTube for the reviews. Um, so, you know, working lights, metal chassis, remote control, two motors. I'm curious if there are flywheels in these from what I saw online. If there are flywheels, they're enclosed. I don't think there are flywheels on this. I think it just has better um, low speed performance. So, let's see. to feel the younger carriage and it is metal which is nice which tells me this is this is a heavy engine wow my first impression is for an el cheapo sort of piece of rolling stock which is i don't mean that in a derogatory way way but when i think of menards you know, i don't think of heavy metal i i think of i think of you know cheap Chinese plastic, but this is, I'm looking at, I'm just going to regard it for a minute here. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to zoom in and tilt down. This is actually pretty nice. Um, legible, I think. Now, there may not actually be any, any words on that, but I mean, still, small graphic. Paint has been applied well. I don't see anything that would make me, if I just saw this running on a, you know, someone's layout, and I, I didn't know any better, I would say this is a, uh, I would probably say, yeah, that looks like a, a Rail King or, an old TMCC, you know, war bonnet. I wouldn't think, oh yeah, that's a Menards special. Uh, mine, interestingly, everything is attached here. I saw the one where it was detached, looking good. My horns, horns are in good shape, despite that box being punctured. Apparently, whatever punctured it did not rattle the box too much. No smoke units. We kind of knew that. Um, looking pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna get this onto the onto the uh, layout here. Okay, so I've got um, the remote loaded with three double A, three sorry, three triple A's, and um, I will tell you, just looking at this remote ahead of time, here are the differences with this and a like a, a Lion Chief kind of a remote. Let me hold a little bit closer here. So, first thing you'll notice using these, there are clicks. I don't want to call them clicks. There, there's resistance, and there's a little bit of resistance moving through here, and it, it is clicky, like that. And I like that. It, as opposed to a Lion Chief remote, which is just kind of freewheeling, so to speak, this, this has some resistance, more resistance than you can find with Lion Chief. And there, there's tactile feedback as you do it, which is nice. The, uh, the buttons, good responsiveness. Um, it's a little bit echoey, but you got to remember we're talking about a cheap engine. Uh, I'm not too worried about how echoey the, remote, the uh, buttons are. I do like the volume. People have talked about this. It is a captive volume knob, meaning you can only bring it so far down and push it so far up. So you do have minimum, maximum on there, which is tactile feedback, which is good. Uh, and again, the on-off switch here is good. Um, you know, on the whole, solid remote. Again, based on what you're paying. So I'm going to... Uh, oh, also on the bottom of the engine, I should note there is a... Show it to you. On the bottom of the engine, there is a flip switch. 
Um, it is not labeled. It would be nice if it were labeled, but this is sound on, this is sound off. Sound on, sound off. So I'm gonna put it to sound on. I'm gonna put it on this yard track here. I apologize for the state of the layout. I did not intend on showing the layout until it was further along, but whatever. All right, so let's apply some power to that track. And turn on the remote. See if the volume works. It does. Yep, yep, sounds good. And I'm going to move it forward here. That's ah, a pretty good clip. Um, let me see. Let me just move for a little bit here. Yeah, it. I would still say it's still a little, with the engine running by itself at least. Oh, it has a backup light. That's pretty cool. Um, with nothing behind the engine, that thing really wants to move. I would say I do like how it, it isn't as jerky. They certainly applied some sort of, you know, there, there's some physics at, at play in there. Maybe there's a flywheel in there, but it still wants to move at the... Just, I mean, look how little I have to move this, and this thing wants to take off. Like, I'm gonna move it like this much. That much. And that thing is moving at, I would say, maybe 15 scale miles an hour, maybe 20. Barely moved. I'm, you know, on this small yard, I'm afraid to crank it, but. Yeah, let's try it. I do like the labored engine sound. All right, that's enough. That's enough. It's off screen for you guys. Let me back them up here. It does have a neat laboring engine sound. It, 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 it you know, winds up. All right, so for fun, uh, let's try the, the horn. Oh God, that horn is awful. I had hoped that they would have done something. Same with the bell. Ugh, not happy. I, I was really hopeful that they were going to do something with that horn and that bell. Oh well. Uh, beta feedback. I do like the talk sounds. It's, it sounds the same as what we had before. Um, so I don't think they did any work to the sound set. I think they did some work to the acceleration and the deceleration. Those are the main changes I'm seeing so far. Uh, I'm gonna put something heavy behind it. Those of you who have these third wheel view liners know these things are not light. So I'm gonna throw some of these behind it. Let's see how it does. Pop the coupler. Sprung coupler works fine. Coupling on a curve doesn't seem to do very well. What's going on here? You know, it doesn't like coupling to third rail stuff. So, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. There. All right, let's try it with one. See how it does. Again, I'm just going to move it a little bit. It's like at maybe one o'clock. Still a pretty good clip. Let me uh, back it up. That is not the engine, that is my view liner that needs some oil. All right, let's throw another view liner on there. Put the diner on. 
Yeah, this is uh, third rail stuff that Scott's been doing. Uh, he made a convert out of him. And, you know, I started off as an eBay only kind of a guy. And um, I'm, I'm really, really liking third rail just based on my experience with the view wires. And uh, obviously, uh, it's not really an eBay kind of a thing. Not usually, at least. All right, so that's two. So <laughs> there is some irony here. I'm just realizing I'm running. I'm running a, a, one of these cars is twice as much as this engine. <laughs> so, whatever. All right. So Menard's engine pulling third rail sleepers. Let's see what go what happens here. Well, that's a strong engine. It's it's not going any slower based off of the added weight. No, sir. No, no, it's it's fine. And you know, I'm I'm running these are these are extruded aluminum cars on a curve, on an S curve, no less. So it's not as if that engine's getting a free pass. Let's throw a third one. I feel like uh, I feel like Richard Dreyfus and Jaws putting more tanks under the shark. All right, let's try it here. Okay. Let's see how we do. So I'm gonna bring it back. Again, one o'clock or 11 o'clock. Okay. And let's take it forward again, just one o'clock. I'm going just to the the dash where it says forward. Yeah, that is not having a hard time. And I would say it's stopping faster. It's taking longer to start and stop, but the top speed is still a pretty good clip. You know what? It is going slower, on, especially on the S curve. So if you put a good heavy load behind this thing, um, it's pretty good. Yeah, and you know, I took that up to about the FOR section of the remote, and uh, I'm gonna take this back to the R, the second R in reverse. And it's not going too fast. Okay, um, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me let me take this forward here. And I'm just gonna pull it around. We'll pull it up here and we'll talk about it for a minute. Oh, up an incline. Oh, yep, there, there's the limit. Okay, well, that's a good test. So this is a very steep incline, and um, that was his limit. So I, I have found the limit. Um, still, these are very heavy cars, so I don't know that I have an engine that would take all three up this incline without any issues. I'm going to need a helper anyway, so not disappointed. All right, so... Um, some closing thoughts about the engine. And I'm gonna make a 3D model of this. Uh, I'm gonna to try to make a 3D model that I'll give you guys in case you wanna. Those of you who know how to play with that stuff in, a, in augmented reality, you can throw it next to your other rolling stock and see how it might look. But um, closing thoughts. Um, here's what I like. I like the, the weight of it. I like the price point. I really can't complain about this engine at all, even when I get to the negatives because of the price point. I mean, look, they're calling it an F7, it's an F9A, whatever. It's a $160 Menards engine. That's what it is. And for what it is, I like it. The pulling power is impressive. It's pulling some heavy third rail rolling stock up an incline, well, at least part way up the incline. Um, the, uh, the, the heft of the engine is, is great. I like that it has two traction motors. Um, you know, I, I think that for the value, this is tremendous. It is the best value we've seen in O-Gage since the beginning of MTH, when MTH was really turning heads back then with, with their Rail King. Um, here's what I don't like. I don't like the sounds. Um, the, the, the idling engine and the, and, and the laboring engine, those are fine. 
I, I don't mind that. And I don't mind the voices, but I'm not a big voice guy. You know, uh, PFAs and all that, I, I run them sometimes on, on my MTH stuff. I don't run Lionel sounds hardly at all in terms of the spoken dialogue. Uh, that's, you can take it or leave it for me. What I like is I like blowing horns and ringing bells. And this is not a horn that I wanna, I, I don't look forward to blowing this horn. And I don't look forward to ringing the bell. I mean, there's no way I'm gonna, you know, play train engineer and, and wanna ring that bell while it's pulling into a yard. So I wish they would've, that's my feedback. They need to do something about that. Um, I do like that you can turn the sounds off. I think that's fine. Um, but yeah, the, the only negative that I can come up with is the sound. You know, obviously this does not have electrocouplers. I don't think we should expect that. I'm not asking for that. Um, but I do think the sounds need some work. Otherwise, it's a great engine. The only other thing I would have done, and this is just cosmetic, I wouldn't have made these chrome plated. I would have made this chrome plated and I would have made these dull. I would have swapped this gray here and put the chrome up here. That's just me. There may be people who tell me I'm just completely off base on that, but I, I just think that would have looked cool. Um, but yeah, no, I'm on the whole, I'm excited to run this under a Christmas tree this year. Um, so I would, I would recommend getting these. Uh, I wouldn't pay more than 180. I think if you go over that price point, then you're starting to edge into Rail King and Lion Chief territory where you're going to get some more bang for the buck. But, um, on the whole, for 150, 160 bucks, maybe 170, it's a nice engine.